morning. As we begin our worship today, we offer the collect of welcoming. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, sent to St. Peter's, all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you. Would give us discerning heart.
Amen. And in your hymnal. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord.
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 29. We will read responsibly by half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord, Lord Christ, Christ. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice is silent. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a young wild. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kaddish. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And strips the forest. And in the temple of the Lord. All are the Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king of Aram. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues, tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord, 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to step down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. When I was a kid, uh, I was uh, spending a lot of my summers where my mom taught school at Bethany College, Bethany, West Virginia. It's a small village in the very northern panhandle of West Virginia, and it's bordered on Pennsylvania by one side and the Ohio River on the other, it's just a narrow strip. And it is rural and beautiful and great. And it was a great thing to be a kid in those days, crawling through the hills and the hollers of West Virginia. And on top of that, it was a rather bucolic setting to grow up in this little village in Bethany, West Virginia. There are only 800 residents in town, and there are only 800-some students in the college. That's how small the place was. So we could get into a lot of trouble and a lot of adventure as little kids. And one of those was exploring, very much sort of a summer of Huckleberry Finn. And a buddy and I decided one day that we would go down to the creek that was below our how, where we lived, and it kind of run on, ran right, right past the, uh, the, the bottom of the village. It was a creek called Buffalo Creek. And the place where we would go and play off, and it was a swimming hole called Castleman's Run. So you get the idea of the setting here. There's this beautiful creek rushing by, sort of a torrent of water. And this creek actually flowed all the way down to the Ohio River. The Ohio River itself flowed into the Mississippi River. The Mississippi flows into the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico empties out into the Atlantic Ocean and into the waters of the world. But Buffalo Creek was our little corner of beauty. And we decided one day in the morning that we were going to hike to the headwaters of Buffalo Creek. How exciting for explorers. It's like we were going after the source of the Nile. Yeah, I was that kind of kid back in the day. So we go on this explore and we're hiking up through the hollers of Northern West Virginia and we get to the creek and we get up the creek and we sort of keep hiking our way up. Sometimes we're bushwhacking through thorns and nettles and things like that, but we're intrepid explorers and we're gonna find the headwaters of Buffalo Creek, the source 
of this water. And of course, if you've ever done this, you know that the big torrent of water that flows past the village then becomes a little bit less and a little bit less until eventually it's just a little tiny ribbon of creek. And then we get finally to the place where the creek begins. And you know what it was? A little patch of muddy dirt. What a humble beginning for something that we really had to respect. I remember as a kid, when that creek would flood, there would be a police officer that came from the next town over to park across the base of the road so people didn't try to cross the bridge because the waters were so great. We were taught to respect that river, that creek. And here we were standing at the very source of all of this amazing power of water and it's a puddle of mud. This is a reminder to us, particularly on the baptism of our Lord, that when we seek the source of things, we often forget, because we're human beings, we want the beginning to be momentous, don't we? You know, it should have a good fanfare. There should be, there should be a sense of, of, of something portentous, something big about to happen. But so often, beginnings are very humble and small, and often very quiet and unassuming. The Jesus whom we celebrate today was born in a little tiny town in a backwater province of an empire that really didn't even bother to learn people's names except to tax them. And he was born in a little village that was not his own in a space that was not his home. And his mother brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him probably in bands of cloth that were torn from his father's extra tunic, and covered him with a borrowed diaper that was face, fat, makeshift fashion, and put him in a feeding trough as his first bed. And he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and Prince of Peace. In the beginning, God moved over the waters of the face of the earth and the earth was without form and void. And God said simply, quietly, let there be light. And there was light. That it was good. All of these portentous, wonderful things, especially the things that God does in our lives, have such humble and small beginnings. They're little tiny notes in a symphony that will eventually swell to fill the whole world with music and grace. And yet, they're so simple in their beginning that too often we forget them and miss them. Even the church itself, this wonderful and great institution that is being lifted up and transformed by the Spirit of God to this day, 2,000 years after our Savior was born. Still, we expect so much of beginnings. And we forget too often how humble we and they are. When Apollos, one of the most gifted Jewish scholars of Alexandria, was traveling around in Asia Minor, preaching a new gospel of Jesus Christ and baptizing so many into a cleansing of sin, a baptism of John as he had received it, people were so excited to hear this good word but they hadn't yet received the Holy Spirit. And Paul arrives and sees them praising God in Christ's name, but there's something missing. And he says, have you heard of the Holy Spirit? And they say, what's the Holy Spirit? We can fix this. And performs the baptism of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit fills the room and everyone is preaching and speaking in tongues. It is such an amazing watershed event. Twelve people were there. A baker's dozen of grace. We're not talking about thousands, tens of thousands of people. We're talking about a dinner party of people that we remember to this day as one of those watershed elements who we are as the body of Christ here and now. It is a challenge to us 
when we resolve to seek the headwaters of our faith and follow all of those tributaries up to the very source of who we are, we expect so much of ourselves, of the historical record of God, to make it a big thing because it means a lot to us. We just have to be prepared for it to be something as simple and sweet as a mud puddle at our feet. Because from that source, that humble source, flows all the waters of the world that offer cleansing and light and spirit to all. Today is the feast of the baptism of our Lord. Rejoice and be glad in that humble beginning. Amen. I got a slow clap from the I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> My brothers and sisters, please rise and join me in an affirmation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we gather around the waters of baptism today, gather us to your heart. Increase our commitment to the vows we have made to follow you. Give our spiritual leaders wisdom, patience, and guidance. Pray for God's people and their leaders. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Sally, our bishop, for Marshall, our rector, for Elizabeth, our associate, and for Ava, our seminarian. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks to the Scottish Episcopal Church. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the reverends Matthew D. Bollinger, Emmanuel Kolju, Huegar Agre, Donald Wisner. As we survey the news of the nations, sharpen our attention to what is happening in the world around us. Compel us to pray for those in authority and for the people they govern that there may be peace between nations and neighbors. Pray for God's all of people. We pray for Joseph, our president, for the legislatures and the courts. We remember all places broken and torn by war and unrest. We pray for peace between nations and peoples. As we build relationships with those with whom we live and work, open our eyes to your presence in their lives and the ways we can serve you by serving them. Pray for our neighbors. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Bobby, David, Sarah, Christina, Leo, Lindsay, and Avery. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. As we see those who suffer in any way, increase our capacity 
to love and to pray. Pray for those who are suffering the illness who struggle with love. We pray for all on our parish prayer list, especially Rick, Chris and Christine, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Sonny, Betty, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, Gail, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Jeffrey, Christopher, Felipe, Diane, Florence, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, Keith, John, Janet, Paul, Doreen, Judy, Donna, Jason, Braden, Terry, Christopher, and Carm. As we say goodbye to those who have departed this life, comfort us in our grief, assuring us of your love. Ever-living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. La Paz de Cristo. So some things that, that are happening around the uh, the campus this coming week. Of course, we have women's breakfast coming up on Saturday, as well as the grief group meeting. So please do keep an eye on your, on your schedule for that. Vestry has been rescheduled to next Monday. Um, so we'll be gathering for that. And uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, the uh, new stove and the new freezer for our community supper in our kitchen are going to be delivered and installed. So, um, yep, absolutely. We're so excited for that. I want to thank Jeannie Fitzpatrick and her leadership supper and her participation in the Comb Book. It is the Royal Neighbors Grant that was given in honor of her name and her service that we have the opportunity to install this new oven and this new freezer. So we're very excited about that. So thankful for that. Yay. Another thing that started late last year and is continuing to grow and gather steam is our Lunch Bunch. This is a youth conceived and run group of, of, of our young ones who have gathered once a month to uh, bag lunches for our feeding ministries, for Alice's Cup and for Kelly's Cupboard. These are lunches that anybody can take and, uh, and uh, take to work, take to school, what have you. But uh, they've been really great about doing that every, every month. This month, they're going to be gathering actually on Monday for Martin Luther King Day for a day of service to learn how to cook for the community supper. Now, when I was 14 and 15 years old, I could cook an omelet and I could heat up SpaghettiOs. And they are about to learn how to cook for 160. So give them a round of applause, but we're excited for that. 
Next week is Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, weekend, so the annual diocesan uh, service of evening prayer commemorating his ministry and life will be held at three o'clock at Trenton uh, th that next Sunday. I'm very excited about this. I was invited to participate in the planning for this service and have been invited to actually offer a short spiritual reflection on the readings for evening prayer. Our main speaker is going to be Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman. Um, she's going to be speaking to uh, the Poor People's Campaign and Civil Rights, the legacies of Martin Luther King Jr. But I want to tell this story so you understand the context of me being invited to speak at the MLK Jr. event. When I was in college at Kenyon, there was a big imbroglio going on over the lack of diversity at the campus. And I was involved with something called the Gambier Organization for Cultural Awareness, sort of the SNCC of Gambier, Ohio. And uh, we were the active uh, student participant group with the Black Student Union in trying to raise and elevate the issue of uh, diversity and, and, and inclusion um, and equity in the college. And in the midst of all of that Sturm and Drang, um, the BSU president and I put together a week of offerings for Martin Luther King Jr. They had never done this at Kenyon before. So we had an art displays. We had readings of, his, of Martin Luther King Jr.'s works. We had uh, performances by diversity, a diversity of artists and speakers and a big gala gathering at the end of the week at which um, the, the president of the Black Student Union, Latanya Johnson and I both spoke at. Latanya is an executive with the Jackie Robinson Foundation and just happens to be a parishioner at Trinity Cathedral in Trenton, New Jersey. So we're getting the band back together. And she and I will be speaking at that service. I hope you will make time to participate and support our cathedral as well as our diocese as we strive for gospel justice in the state of New Jersey. And uh, please do join us for that. Yes, Amy. It will be on Zoom. Yes, I understand it will be. So we'll, we'll make sure that the link goes out as well. But we'll make a reminder for everybody so that if you can't make the gathering of the service, you'll be able to check that out. But I'm very excited about this. Um, it's it's one of the first big sort of uh, gospel justice liturgies that our bishop is planning. So uh, please do make the time to participate. It's a great opportunity. Um, one of the things that I'll also draw your attention to in the bulletin, please look in the bulletin and review the prayer list. We are at the point now at the new year where we are making uh, sure that our prayer list is accurate and up to date. If there is someone that you've asked us to pray for who has had their prayer granted or fulfilled, please do let us know in the office. Give Chris a call and uh, we'll cycle that person off. If there's somebody who would like to be on the prayer list, let us know. This is our annual sort of clearing and making sure the shelves are clean and open for anybody else. But please do review the list and make sure that we're up to date on that. Hey, guess what time of year it is? It's can-can season. <laughs> Shoprite. Shoprite can-can. This is a good time. Yes, it is can-can season. So Devin, if you're into SpaghettiOs, this is your moment. But more importantly, it is the moment for you all to go to ShopRite using the cards, of course, that Sandy has that you support the parish with, purchase some canned goods, make sure that Alice's Cup and uh, Kelly's Cover get those donations. We appreciate that support. This time of year is difficult for people who are seasonally employed um, and do keep them in mind and in your heart, but also keep the memory of them going in your pocketbook as we make your shopping uh, agendas happen. And so thank you for your support of our feeding ministries. That means the world. Of course, the shop is open to regular schedules. Yes. And this is the time of year when many people are cleaning out their closets. You know, you've got that uh, New Year's resolution to reduce the clutter in your home. Now's the time. Saturday, 10 to 1. Yeah. Don't be late. Don't be late. We are so excited for Jessica's impending delivery of uh, the one that will make two, three for her and Father Freddie. So we're excited for that. However, it does make a movable feast, which is when her maternity leave will start with us because we're trying to make sure that she has the time she needs to welcome the baby, but also to make sure that we can get her back in a good and timely way. So whenever that happens between now and February, February 6th. So we've got about four weeks give or take, but you know, babies, they're always on schedule. Whenever that happens, um, and we're going to celebrate that, but Jessica will be away from the piano and uh, we are going to take a fast from music. We uh, are so grateful for all of the gifts that you've brought to the community, for the leadership you've given us. We are not going to muddy that by bringing someone in to sub in. We're going to be patient and celebrate your ministry and witness 
and wait patiently for you to return. Um, probably sometime, give or take around Holy Week, depending on how things go. As again, as I said, this is a movable feast, so we'll figure out what it goes. But until such time as the feast is back, we'll be fasting. So just so you're aware of that, if you walk in and there's no music, that's why, because a baby came. So we're very excited about that. Reverend Liz is out today. Please pray for her health. She, like so many others, is fighting the flu and the, the crud that uh, so many have dealt with. Um, we play, pray for her swift recovery, and uh, we're very thankful for all the gifts that she brings and uh, really grateful for all of that. So any other, oh, in the back, if you requested envelopes, they are there for your giving uh, for the year. If you haven't requested envelopes and would like those, please let Bev know. She'll make that happen. And again, if you have chosen to give online, we appreciate that support. That makes a very consistent flow of income for the support ministry and mission of the church. If you haven't yet made your commitment of early of giving for the year, you can still do so. We appreciate that support. Stewardship here is 365, 24-7. We care for this church, and we're grateful for that. We do have the Change for Change jar back there, but we have not yet decided as a vestry what this quarter's focus of giving will be. We did the Rector's Discretionary Fund for last quarter, and uh, whatever this quarter is going to be, we look forward to sharing that with you. If you've got a suggestion for a regional national or international charity that you would like to see us support, let us know that. This is a participatory effort as we offer our change for change. All are welcome at this altar. We're glad you're here. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But my dear brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Please join in singing as with gladness, men of old, 119 in your hymnal. As we join on the steps they spread to the last so may we with willing feet ever seek the mercy seat as they offer this offering and that nature. So may we with only joy and free from sin. All our forces, treasures free. I soothe the heart The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Padre Santo y bondadoso, con amor infinito nos creaste para ti, y cuando caemos en el pecado y quedamos bajo el poder del mal y de la muerte, Tú nos tuviste misericordia y enviaste a Jesucristo, tu Hijo único y eterno, a compartir la naturaleza humana, a vivir y morir como nosotros y a reconciliarnos contigo, Dios y Padre de todos. Sobre la cruz, Jesús extendió sus brazos y, obedeciendo tu voluntad, se ofreció como sacrificio perfecto por el mundo entero. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctificadas por tu Espíritu, que sean para tu pueblo el cuerpo y la sangre de tu Hijo, la santa comida y bebida de la vida nueva y sin fin que tenemos en él. Santificanos también a nosotros para que fielmente recibamos este santo sacramento y te servamos firmes, unidos y en paz y en el día final, llevanos con todo tu pueblo, santos al gozo de tu reino eterno. Oh. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now in the language of our heart, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
Body of Christ, Spirit of Heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. <laughs> It's your show. Click it right here, and then you're good to go. It's Mary Lasada. Star of wonder, star of star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Birthday buddies. Oh, for my Oh, that's right. A new nephew. What's his name? Malin. M A L I N. A new nephew, Malin, has joined the, the host of, 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 uh, of saints here in this world. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. 
and in their hearts may thy peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of their lives through jesus christ our lord amen happy birthday to molly and a blessing happy birthday you get a sticker sticker oh. miss jessica you get a sticker for Malin. There you go. <laughs> que Cristo, el Hijo de Dios, se manifieste en ustedes. Que sus vidas puedan ser luz para el mundo y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, sea con ustedes y permanezca con ustedes por siempre. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us sing together the first three verses of Hail to the Lord's Anointed, 616 in your hymnal. Mm -hmm. Love and serve Jesus Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. 